How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a full fish room tour. Now I've been getting demands for this video for a very, very long time. I in fact haven't made a fish room tour basically since this place started up and I can tell you what, a lot of stuff has changed. Now in this video, we're gonna be going through literally every single tank in the fish room. I'm gonna be discussing what's happening and you know, the fish inside of that tank and my plans for what I want to be doing in here. And for all you guys who are new to the channel and don't know, I do a lot of breeding for profit. So I breed a lot of these fish and I sell them to shops and wholesalers and I even sell them to you guys. So if you're interested, down below on my website, down below, you can get a lot of these fish and I'll be telling you throughout the video which fish you can get. Now, sadly, I can only ship fish in Australia because I live in Australia and I can only ship to selected states. So. That's a bit annoying, but nonetheless, you guys can go and have a look at everything that's in this fish room. Now, not everything's gonna be perfect, and there are things that are obviously gonna be in progress like there would be in any fish room, so I decided I'd just rip the Band-Aid off and just make this video because nothing's ever gonna be like spotless and perfect. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, and so here's the fish room now. In this fish room, we've got 65 tanks. We've got the fish room split up into two sides. So there's this side of the fish room that's got 18 tanks and all of these tanks over this side of the fish room are designed for grow out and then over on this side a lot of these fish tanks are designed for breeding now obviously there's some tanks like you can see here which are used for growing out certain things and basically this whole fish room just kind of runs and I don't really know how it runs it just kind of runs and I just try and make things fit and it all seems to work out in the end now all of these tanks are two foot tanks and these are four foot tanks and then there's these three three foot tanks as well here so We've got a lot of stuff in this fish room. We've got a lot of plecos, we've got a lot of corridoras, and we've got a lot of angelfish and things like that. So you're gonna to get to see that throughout the video. Now, I thought I'd start this video off over on this side of the fish room because this is where everything seems to start off when we're breeding stuff. So over on this side of the fish room, I've shown you guys before, we've got the fry system. So this is a fry system that I mocked the idea from Dean, from Dean's Fish Room. So this is not my idea. He came up with this idea and um, it seems to work very, very well. So I've explained it in previous videos, but basically the way it works is we've got these containers suspended above the water column. And what happens is there's an inlet for water. So water comes in through these little pipes and drips in, and then it overflows out the back and the water's pumped up from down the bottom over here. And you know, it comes up and it goes into these boxes and overflows out. So there's constantly fresh water in here. And we've also got a bit of air and the water comes out of this side. So there's a sponge blocking that so the fish can't get out. And we've got all these containers with all sorts of different fry. So in this first container, we have a bunch of these Dwarf Neon Precox Rainbow Fry. And I've been trying to breed a few more of these guys. I've got a lot of them in my Pleco tanks above a lot of the Plecos. And you just chuck a spawning mop in there and hash these guys out. So this is just one batch. There's probably only about 150 of these guys in here. And normally I'd like to get a couple hundred. So. This is a decent batch, but obviously we want to try and get a few more in future batches. Like this one here is another smaller batch. Now these guys are a little bit younger. You can see them swimming around in that back corner over there, but there's definitely not nearly as many. Maybe there's only like 30 of these guys in here or 40 of these guys in here. So you can see that's a little bit annoying, but we're trying to bump up production of these guys. If we come over here to this box, we've just got some betters. Now I'm not too sure what kind of betters these are. These would just be like maybe some Galaxy Koi betters and these guys are just growing out. You can see them all in and amongst this Java Moss. And if you guys are interested, there is a lot of Java Moss available on my website down below, so you can get some of that. And yeah, there's just a ton of these little baby bettas swimming about. You can see them all on camera there. There's a lot of poop down the bottom which needs to be sucked out, but that's okay because these guys are all very, very healthy at the moment. And then in this box, we have a bunch of angelfish fries. So these are actually mixed angelfish from two of my pairs. There's a gold marble pearl scale pair crossed with a dark marble angelfish. And then there's a gold marble pearl scale angel crossed with an ultim in here. So it's gonna be interesting to see what these fry look like when they start to develop. And if you guys are interested and you subscribe to the channel, you'll get to see the videos where these guys will start to go into their own grow out tanks and you'll see what we've created. I'm pretty sure I'll know what the gold marbles are gonna look like crossed with the dark marbles, but I'm not too sure what that ultim's gonna look like with that gold marble, so it'll be interesting to see. And then in here, we've got some more angelfish. I think these are just a gold marble angelfish, and there's a bit of flow in here, so these guys might need to be moved into a separate box, but for now, they're doing okay, and the flow is pretty good for actually developing their muscles, so this isn't hurting them too much, but they could do with a little bit less flow like in that other box, but we've got some more angels in here. In here, we've just got a few baby bettas, so these guys are probably ready to go into a grow out tank now. In here we actually have some angelfish wrigglers. You can see them all down there in that bottom corner. We've just got some gold marble and dark marble angel cross 
angelfish here and the reason I've been doing a lot of crossing is just for genetics because we've had a few bad batches with lots of bent fins and I think it's due to the genetics so we've been mixing it up a little bit and we're going to see whether their fins turn out a little bit better. And then in this next fry box we have some Bosmani rainbow fish. So these guys I'm super excited to start having in the fish room. This is my first batch that I will be selling. This is not on fast mode, this is actually just them in real time. I think there's quite a lot of flow going in here. Like you can see right there, so we might have to turn that down. Just to give them a little bit of a break. But these guys are very, very cool. And super happy to have a lot of these guys coming through. Obviously this is a smaller batch as well. Hopefully in the future we'll get like hundreds of these guys coming through. but. We're just being patient at the moment. These guys sell for quite a bit at the shops, like 20 bucks each here in Australia, so no rush with these guys. And then in the final box, a lot of you guys have been asking about these, and these are some yellow Hellboy betters. So this is my second batch. We've only got like 20 of these guys in here, and uh, we'll have to wait to breed these guys and see what they look like, but there's only gonna be a few of these guys available when they are available, and they're in a little bit of a dirty box, but they're doing okay. They don't have any color yet because they're so small, but they'll get color in the future, maybe in a month or so and start to look really good. So that's basically it for the fry system. We've only got this much fry in here at the moment. Down the bottom of the fry systems, I like to use it for my plants. So I actually sell a lot of plants on the website down below. And you can get a lot of these plants. Like we've got some crested java fern here, we've got some normal java fern, and we've got some crypts, we've got some red crypts and things like that, some anubias. And then over here, we've got some bacopa and some wisteria and some amazon swords and stuff like that. So I don't actually make these plants, I just buy them and sell them on the website. But they're very, very cheap and a lot of people like to add them to their fish orders and everything like that. And I'm also growing out a few different types of bristle nose down the bottom of these tanks to breed in the future. So we've got some long fin blue eyed lemons here, which were purchased in a prior vlog. And we've got 20 of them growing out and they've started to put on a little bit of size and they look really, really cool. We've also got some super red bristle nose and we've got some long fin bristle nose in here, just the mixed types. So these are just some long fins and then you can see Maybe behind that zucchini there is a super red growing out. They'll be getting produced in the fish room in probably about a year's time when they're all ready to breed, but they're just growing out and utilizing some tank space down the bottom of these fry tanks. So now I guess that's not really it for the fry system. There's also these boxes which are just hatching out some rainbow fish. So we've just got some Bosmanis in here and there's not many in this spawn for some reason. So maybe that's due to some snails in that spawning mop or something like that. I've only seen a couple of fry in here. But very exciting over in this container, we've got some turquoise rainbows. So there's about 20 of them in here. And then of course, we've just got a mountain of these Praycox rainbows in this box. There's just so many. And these guys at this size, they just eat some Hikari first bite. So I just dust that on the surface of the water and there's just a little bit of air going into each one of these containers, like you can see. But I quickly wanted to show you guys some of the betters that we have available on the website. So we've got a lot of these guys in here. These will all be getting sold this week, but these are just some different half moon cuts. So we've got some really cool like blue marble ones here. So this guy's actually available on the website. And then we've got these guys here, which are just some black samurais, which have already been sold. And these are very, very cool. We've got one half moon available, which we'll probably just have to go to the shop this week if it doesn't sell, because he's been for sale for a little bit. Maybe we'll drop the price for this video. And we've just got like a ton of betters available as well. So I'm not too sure which betters will be available down below. After I record this video, I will be adding quite a few more betters to the website. There's a lot of really, really cool ones in this batch. Like you can see right here, this is a beautiful better. This is one of our Galaxy Koi's and he could be available on the website. So it's worth going and checking it out before someone snaps them up because when I put these really beautiful ones on the website, they clearly sell quick. But like you can see, we're gonna add a few more of these Black Samurai betters. So that's a beautiful one there. And then we've got like some of these really cool black ones with like just a little bit of white coming through. So you can see like this one here, this would be added to the website as well. So go down so go down to the website and have a quick look if you wanna have a look and possibly pick up a really cool better. A lot of the people that buy our betters are very, very happy with the quality and they just make for really cool little pets and they can go in a planted tank. And uh, you guys know about betters if you're watching this video. So we've got lots of betters available at the moment. Also over here, I like to culture some infusoria. So I just use these infusoria cultures for different things like the rainbow fish and I also use it for baby quarries and different types of things like hopefully I'm going to be using it on some rams in the future and we'll see how that goes but that's what I use this shelving for. We've also just got like some supplies down the bottom there and we've just got like random goodies up here. So that's it for this side of the fish room now. I guess what we can do is we can start going through all the grow out tanks and having a look at what's in each one of these. So up here on these top two tanks, we've got some random things that are just like kind of taking up space in the fish room until they've got a good home to go to. So 
Up in this top corner we've got some L333 plecos and we've also got some long nose whip tails which are just in here for temporary storage at the moment until there's some space on the other side of the fish room for these guys to go into. But these are the long nose whip tails which you can see. I've got five of them and they're nearing breeding age. I got these when we first started up the fish room and they've put on a lot of size since then. And then I think we've got seven of these L333 plecos up the back as well, which need to go into their own tank. Yeah, these guys are in here. There's some Ambulia that I like to attach to rocks, which is growing in here as well, which helps to cycle out the nitrates and keep the aquarium quite clean. And yeah, these guys are doing quite well in here. There's just a bit of zucchini there that they've been eating. And then we've also got some new additions to the fish room, these Royal Whiptails. So I'm gonna give it a crack at trying to breed these guys. They'll probably need to go into a separate tank but we're gonna be trying to breed them. I've got two females and a male, I'm pretty sure, and they've been eating some zucchini as well. These guys haven't settled in amazingly, but hopefully they continue to just eat a little bit and put on some size. And yeah, they're gonna be getting moved into a cooler tank, so hopefully they start to do a little bit better, but there's three of them in here. There's another one in here, but she's hiding somewhere, and yeah. And then down here, we just have some plants, and this tank's gonna be getting used for Cory grow out, so. We've got quite a few koi's that need to go into this tank, but there's just some plants down the bottom which are available as well. So just some more crypts and some more really cool red saws which I haven't seen before. So they'll probably sell pretty quickly. And then over here, we've got a bit of a dud batch of angelfish. So this is kind of why I decided to outcross and just only mix fish with different bloodlines because I don't want to have to keep culling angelfish. It's really heartbreaking and something that I don't like doing a lot. And if I can avoid creating angelfish with bent fins, then that's good for me because as I'm like producing fish in this fish room, I've noticed that a lot of people aren't really interested in angelfish at the moment and I'm actually dialing back on the production of angelfish. And I'm only gonna do a bunch of different types of assorted angelfish. So I'm not trying to produce like different strains. I'm just tr trying to produce, you know, basic angelfish that I can sell to shops and sell to you guys. So having to have the different types and, you know, like the koi's and platinums and stuff like that doesn't matter to me anymore and I'm happy to mix up stuff and see what I can create. So these guys, really cool that you, like nonetheless, will come up to you and even though they've got their bent fins, they're still very, very cool. And then up here we have some grow out Monica Peru angelfish or Peruvian altums. So these guys will be getting sold this week. There's just some grow outs from some old batches that are still here. And there's also a few culls in here. So like those bent fins, maybe that one would be all right. But these are like, uh, probably like a C or a B grade. They're not like the best quality, the best ones have already been sold. So they'll probably just go to the shops. And then down here, we have some better grow outs. So these guys are some red dragons and some black samurais and a few random little koi's and stuff like that. So you can see them in here. They're nearing the time where they're gonna need to be jarred and put into their own little containers and be on sold. But there's quite a few in here. This isn't like, a massive batch, but this is still quite a large batch. This is a pretty cool looking one here. And yeah, these guys are pretty cool. And then down here is another kind of empty tank. And the reason this tank's empty is because we've got some baby bristlenose in here. So there's bristlenose from two batches. And you guys might be wondering why you're just producing common bristlenose. And these guys, you cannot produce enough of because you can't import them into Australia. A lot of the time shops need to buy them from local breeders. And every time I have these available, they sell out straight away. So we've got lots of bristlenose coming through. Once these babies start to put on a bit of size, so you can see like up here, we've got an albino and two commons. Once these guys start to put on a bit of size, we can actually add some fish to the top of this tank. So we'll probably have to add some angel fish or something like that that can swim up the top and these guys can be down the bottom. And we'll add some more ambulia. Like you can see there's some ambulia here, but this stuff will grow up and hopefully help to keep the tank really stable and, and will hopefully allow us to have a lot of fish in this tank. And then up here we have some spare rainbow fish. So these guys will probably be getting used for brood stock in the future. These guys are just in here and they're all leftovers from what I've previously sold. And we've also got some spare quarries that are available as well. So these guys are actually available on the website, these little stir bike quarries. A lot of people have been buying them and I haven't actually been able to take many of these guys to the shops or wholesalers, even though we had hundreds because everyone bought them all. So they're $9.95 each on the website and you can just see how beautiful and cute they are. They've been eating a ton of my beef heart mix and they've been eating some pellets and some flakes and stuff like that and I've really settled in well into this aquarium. These guys are a really good match for each other using Cory grow outs and rainbow fish grow outs because they don't seem to bother each other too much and they grow out pretty well. Like if you keep Cory's and angelfish together, they don't do too well. For some reason, they just kind of like don't get along very well. But because these rainbow fish stay up the top of the body of the water, and these guys stay right down the bottom. They don't seem to bother each other too much. So these are just some of the stir-by quarries. 
very, very cute fish. And then down here, we just have some grower angelfish. So you can see the ambulia down the bottom there growing up. And there's also a few plecos in here, but most of the plecos were sold this morning, which is why this tank's a little bit cloudy. And these guys will be getting taken to a wholesaler very soon. These are the ones I've been taking out. And when people buy these guys on the website down below, I take the best ones out of these tanks. Like you can see this one here, I'd sell on the website. We've also got some more angelfish grow outs down here. So these are just some gold marble pearl scales. There's a little pleco there. And these guys are a little bit older so they can actually be cohabitated. So that's it for this side of the fish room. Now we can go over to this side of the fish room and start working through these tanks. So up in this tank, I have to zoom out a little bit so you can see them all, but up here we have some German blue rams. So these are actually bred from my friend Justin and uh, I've been growing these guys out and you can see just how many there are. So there's a lot of these guys available right now, but I don't have many of these guys coming through after this and I'm only gonna be breeding black rams. So these will be like the last GBIs in the fish room for a long time, I think, because the German rams, a lot of people around me produce them and I can compete, but it's just more worth my time to breed the black ones and the blue ones. So they're in here. They're also in here with some peppermints. So you can see there's a peppermint bristle nose right here. There's also peppermints available down below. So you can see right there, that's like a smaller peppermint. That's probably like a little female there. We've got another little peppermint there. And these guys are all a little bit shocked because this morning I took out a few of these and took them to a shop. So there's some peppermints available in here, but you're not gonna be able to see them too well because they're all hiding in amongst that driftwood. But this is our first tank. So we've got some German rams in here. And then down below, we have some more angelfish. These guys are pearl scales as well. These guys aren't a crazy good batch like the other ones, but they're a little bit younger and should hopefully turn out like the ones I was showing you before. And then down here, we also have some adult angelfish. So these are old brood stock. And these guys are just temporarily being housed in here while they wait to go to the shop. And uh, these guys will be going next week. So we can use this tank for something else, maybe some koi grow outs or something like that, because we do have a lot of koris being bred in the fish room. So there's some large angelfish. These guys are the Monica Perus. So you can see just how good they look when they're adults. And we're not gonna be breeding any more of them. So these will be like the last ones available but they look very, very good as adults and they look even better in a dark tank. And then we just have some like random, you know, assorted different types of angelfish, like some veil tails and some leftover koi's and things like that as we slow down the production of angelfish in the fish room. And then down here, you guys have seen this tank from a previous video. This is just a tank with some more better grow outs and these guys are all ready to be jarred. So I've actually been jarring fish out of here for quite a long time. There's actually just hundreds of these guys in here and they're all starting to nip each other's fins and that's not good. So I have to start jarring a lot of these guys and moving the ones that you saw before. So, so the chances are if you've seen a better that you like on the website down below, don't wait to get it because it probably will be gone very, very quickly. I don't know why this rule is in here. Weird. They'll probably be gone because I have to really just cycle through these betters at the moment and make sure all of these guys go to great homes before they start to nip each other's fins and kill each other. So lots of betters available down below and lots of betters in the fish room at the moment. And then up here, we've got some more German rams. These are just blue rams. And you can see these guys will do the same thing. I really like feeding the rams. You can see how crazy they are. So a couple hundred in here. And then up here, we have some grow outs of some black rams. So these are just blue blacks. I've already filtered out all the midnights. And you can see when you breed black rams, you get three different types of rams or you get four different types. You get golds you get blue rams and you get these blue blacks. So the blue blacks are available down below. I don't have any midnights at the moment because I need to use them for brood stock, but we've got lots of those available and uh, they're just in here with a few bristle nose and some java moss and they look fantastic. And then if you come over here, we've got some more blue blacks and blues and stuff like that over here. So there's quite a few of them as well. They are such a cool fish and they're very, very big now. So they're all ready for breeding. So. If you do breed two of these together, the blue blacks, you'll get some midnights and then you can use those midnights for whatever you want. But these guys, they do carry that black ram gene. You can't just breed like pure black rams. They don't breed like that. So you do need to breed these guys together to get the really, really dark ones. But here's some of our blue blacks. And then down here, a lot of people have been asking me about discus. Now, this is a batch of discus that I bred a little bit ago and they're all starting to get to the size where they're gonna be sold. But I haven't got a batch since, so We've only got about 30 of these guys and they're not available down below yet. They might become available soon, but you can see they've got a little bit of growing to do and they've got to put on some more color. And I'm considering just taking these guys to a shop and trying again with some discus, but I haven't been having a crazy amount of success with discus. It's been a little bit annoying for me. Yeah, we've only got about 30 of these guys and they've been eating beef heart and stuff like that, but they're a very tricky fish to breed and they're not easy by any stretch of the imagination at all. 
And then in the final grow out tank, we have some more betters. So in here, we've got some yellow hellboys and some, I think, blue marbles. So we're going to get some random different types in here. I'm not too sure what there's going to be in here. And we've also just got some baby peppermints. So these guys, there's probably 100 baby peppermints in here. You can see them all on like that banana leaf there. And they're just growing out. These guys don't mix very, very well with the betters. So I won't be doing that in the future. I'll just be breeding the betters by themselves or I don't know where I'll put down the bottom of the better tanks. But the peppermints don't go great with the betters. They go better with like the rams and stuff like that because the betters, they have like a white end to their tail and the betters seem to nip at that white end. So that's kind of annoying like you can see. These two up here, they've got their ends nipped, which is okay. They'll still grow back and it won't hurt them too much. And the betters are learning not to eat that. But when they were a little bit younger, it was a bit more of a problem, but now it's not so much of a problem. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all the grow out tanks in the fish room. Lots of stuff in here, not as much as I normally have. Normally I have quite a lot of fish growing out, but some of these fish in here are nearing the end of their time in here and they're ready to go to the wholesalers. And we've got lots of stuff over on this side of the fish room that's ready to go into those grow out tanks. So. We'll start working through some of these tanks. So I guess we'll start over on this side of the fish room and we'll just work through all of the tanks and get to see what's in here. So it's gonna be hard to see these guys because they're in a very dark tank. You can see my reflection. These guys are just the pair of pearl scale angels and dark marble angel that created the fry that I was showing you guys before. So these guys are just in here with some peppermint bristle nose. There's five peppermints in here and I've been trying to get these guys to breed but they haven't been as prolific as some other pairs. So. That's a little bit annoying, but we've got these guys at the moment. So they're one of three pairs, I think, of angelfish in here. And then in this next tank, we've got the Big Daddy Peppermint that's been creating a ton of babies. He's actually on Wrigglers right now. So he's the one on the right, and then he's got the female on the left there. And they're just in here by themselves. There's a bit of zucchini here. And I went away on holidays for like two days, and they actually had another spawn, and I didn't realize it. And they released a ton of babies in here. So there's probably like 100 babies in this tank. So I've just been leaving them in here. They used to be like an adult pair of angelfish, but I took them out. Hopefully, once they're a little bit bigger, I can start to fish them out and uh, get all the babies out of there. And then down below, we have my colony of these black Venezuelan koi. So I bred these in a prior video, but I haven't given them much effort since then. I just haven't had time. And we've got quite a few of them in here. I think there's like nine of them. And they've been breeding and stuff like that, but they just haven't been fertilizing the eggs. So I'm waiting for them to fertilize the eggs before I start to make a massive effort. But there's definitely males and females, and I think they just need to learn a little bit better. And then down here, there's nothing too fancy to see in here. This is just some stir by Cory grow out space. So they'll all be hiding underneath that moss and underneath that piece of wood. You can see one right there in the middle of the screen. There's probably only like 100 in here, but these are just some stir by Cory. So you can see there's quite a lot of them being produced at the moment. And then if we come to the tank opposite, you can see we've got some more Cory's in here. So these are just a bunch of different types of Cory's. So these might be some trilineatus quarries and then some panda quarries and a longfin panda quarry there and maybe some similar quarries and just a big mix of different types which will be getting separated once they're a little bit older but they're all about a centimeter in size and they're out because they think I'm going to give them some food so underneath that wood I can guarantee you there'll be just hundreds of these guys and I've been making a ton of quarries at the moment like an unbelievable amount of these guys so lots of them coming through and uh, they're always great sellers in the fish room. Next door to them, we've also got some more quarries. So just another tank with the same stuff going on. Maybe a few less in this tank than that tank I just showed you before, or maybe they're all hiding or something like that. And then in the tank next to them, we've just got a bunch of these stir by quarries, which are all ready to go into their four foot tank to grow out. So they're actually in here with some celestial pearl danios that I've been fatting up. So these guys are almost ready to breed. I got them and they were pretty skinny, but I've been giving them a ton of baby brian shrimp and they've been putting on a lot of size. So there's gonna be videos coming out in the future with me breeding these and trying to get a ton of these coming through in the fish room. They're a very high demand fish and I've really fallen in love with how beautiful they are. And they've actually been spawning, I think in here, but obviously the quarries will just be eating all those eggs. So you can see them up the back, but, and then here we've got some dark marble angelfish grow outs. These guys are not doing too great in here and not because of the water quality or anything like that, just because this is a very dark tank and these guys have just been nipping at their fins and you can see they can't tell like between food and the like each other and they've just been nipping at each other's fins and they've all got really short fins. So these guys need to come out ASAP. I didn't notice this until a couple of days ago when I saw that, but a lot of these guys do need to get moved on to a new tank and a lot of them because they can't like, because they're getting nipped at, can't swim properly and things like that so and you guys might be wondering why you're even showing us this and it's just to show you guys like look I'm not perfect and things like this do happen in fish rooms and 
it's not always a success, so that's what's going on in here. And then up here we have a tank with some black ram breeders, and these guys are not the dark knights, these are just blue blacks. We've got, I think, quite a few in here. We've got a few tanks like this, so I was talking about these in the prior vlog. These are just the blue blacks. There's a big male right there. He's actually the male that created all of the black rams in the fish room, and then we've just got a nice big female there. And there's a few others in here with some more of that Ambulia. Like you can see here, we've also got a few other tanks with some more breeders. So these are actually brood stock that I've selected out. They've actually been breeding, but they're not old enough to fertilize the eggs properly. And we're just letting them grow out and turn into really, really good breeders in this tank. And then we've got another tank down here with the same stuff going on. And there's also some blue eye lemon grow outs as well. These are just standard blue eye lemons. So I'll be producing some of those very soon, but they've been spawning, but I just haven't been bothered to take the eggs out because they're not fertilized. And then the things everyone's been waiting for. This is the tank with the Black Knight Rams. So these guys grow quite a lot slower and I'm still waiting for them to get up to size to where they can actually breed properly. They've probably got another two months before they're actually at that size where they can really do a lot of production. But you can see that female there, those are actually some eggs down there. So they have been breeding in here, but they're not fertilized ever. So that's a little bit annoying, but you can see they're very, very, very dark. These are all definitely Black Knight Rams. Like you can see this one up here. There's no way you could not call out a Black Knight Ram. So I think there's like maybe 19 or 20 in this tank. So these will be getting used as future breed stock in the fish room. And there's like a bristlenose in here as well. That's the Black Knight Rams in the fish room at the moment. So not for sale yet, but there will be some maybe in the next, I don't know, six or seven months. And up here, I have a pair of discus that I've paired off, but they haven't been breeding properly as well. So. Man, discus just have not been a great success for me. There's, I think, a, this is a tiger snake skin or something like that. And then a, another eruption discus. I'm not too sure someone that knows discus is gonna tell me, but man, I just really <laughs> have not been having a great lot of success with these guys. And then apologies for the glare, but here we've got a very unproductive pair of black angels. Now, I've decided to keep this pair of angelfish because they've spawned like once or twice and they haven't been successful yet in spawning properly, but they've been quite a good pair. And black angelfish, I mean, just look how cool they are. They're in very high demand and they fetch a few more dollars than the normal angelfish. So I think it's worth producing some of these. So hopefully they start to get into gear. Maybe in summer they'll start to breed a little bit better, but this is my pair of black angelfish. And then in the next tank, we've got some adult blue eye lemon bristlenose. So I think that's a female there in the middle of the screen. And then we've got another female there and there's a male that's a very, I don't know, he's just not a great male that's up the back there. I bought this colony and uh, they haven't bred yet, so hopefully they breed. And then in here we have the pair of angelfish. This is the Monica Peru angelfish crossed with the gold marble angelfish that have been creating fry. And now I'm gonna be super fascinated to see what these fry look like. I mean, these are two very different ends of the spectrum in regards to, you know, angelfish and things like that. So it's gonna be interesting to see what these guys create. They're in here with some bristlenose, which have been breeding. There's a male there on eggs. And now I might cop a bit of flack for this tank, but this is just a tank with some equus quarries in there. Now, you're not gonna be able to see the equus quarries because, well, the tank's very, very dirty. And you guys might be wondering, why is this tank so dirty? And I've actually just decided to stop doing water changes in this tank for all of winter. <laughs> um, and in summer, I'm gonna be, you know, dosing them up with a lot of food. So they're being underfed at the moment and uh, there's a quarry right there in the middle of the screen. This is just to imitate a dry season. So in summer, once the storms come back and there's lots of rainwater, I'm gonna be using a ton of rainwater and flushing these guys out and trying to convince them to spawn because equus quarries are very hard to spawn. Yeah, we're just gonna be patient with these guys and see what happens. And then here we have a shrimp breeding tank. So these guys are my blue dreams. I think I started off with about 20 and these guys have just been such a prolific colony of shrimp. You can see in here, we've got some adults swimming around and if you look around like up here, you can see lots of little baby shrimplets. So these guys have been super productive. They've been really, really breeding well. And uh, I've been having a lot of success with these guys. They're all on this guppy grass and the guppy grass has been growing very, very well. And there's probably like a hundred shrimp in here now. And I probably started off with about 20. There's probably way more than that. I'm just completely underestimating that, but they're on a lot of this leaf litter. And there's actually some blue ram swan snails in here, which you can see there that are now available on the website down below. So if you wanna get some of those, they're available down there. They're very, very cool. But this is just a big blue tank with lots of blue things in it. So the blue shrimp and the blue snails. And then up here is a tank that I haven't shown you guys before. I actually don't think a lot of people know that I have these. 
up here is one of my colonies of these L134 leopard frog plecos. So these guys are a breeding colony of adults. This tank's a little bit dirty because they were fed zucchini last night and they've dirtied up the water a little bit, so they'll be getting a water change this afternoon. But in here we've got seven of these L134 adults. Now, they haven't spawned for me and I've had them for about a month and a half, so that's pretty normal. I've had one trapping in the other tank, which I'll show you in a second, but they're in here with these breeding Prakox rainbows. And yeah, they've been doing very, very well. They're eating rapashi and zucchini and green beans and stuff like that. So we've got seven in this colony. I've got a colony of eight growing out and then I've got another seven at this size as well. So hopefully they start to breed. Apparently leopard frogs are one of the hardest species of plecos to breed. So I'm crossing my fingers we have some success because these were very expensive. And then down here is another dark tank which there's not gonna be a lot of action in. But in here we have 10 L270 plecos that are hiding. They're hiding amongst this uh, debris and this tank needs a clean and a revamp which will be happening in the future. But I just haven't had time to get around to it. So they're just in here at the moment, you know, sitting around and doing their thing. And I've been checking up on them and making sure they're doing okay. Like you can see there's one up the back there. And they're doing good. Um, they're just eating zucchini and stuff like that. But this tank will be getting turned into a bit of a better tank in the future. Now I just stirred these guys up, but these are my colony of these gold laser quarries. And I've spawned them once, but I haven't spawned them for quite a long time. And I've been trying to get them to breed, but I just haven't had any success. So they're a very shy quarry and I've just stirred them up. So you can see they're all going to go hide underneath that java moss. And I haven't given it like a massive, massive crack at trying to breed them. But in the future, I will be trying to breed these once I put on a little bit more size. They're still very, very young, maybe about six months old. So even if they do breed, they're probably not going to be great but they're a very cool looking fish. I mean, they look just like no other quarry and they've been doing very well in this grow out tank or this, I guess, breeding tank now. And then up here, we have some of these L201 plecos that have been growing out since last year. These guys should start breeding next year and they've been putting on a lot of size. We've got definitely males and females. I'm pretty sure there's some bigger ones in here and some smaller ones. So I'm thinking there's males and females and you know, they're looking very, very cool. I mean, what kind of fish looks like this in the wild? It's like this big polka dot, cool looking fish. So they eat lots of protein. So they eat a lot of rapashi and cichlid pellets and stuff like that. I don't feed them a lot of veg matter. Although I did add some zucchini yesterday just to get them some veg matter because I haven't had any for a little bit, but there's six of them in here. And I'm very keen to get these guys breeding maybe next year, hopefully next year. And then down here is a tank that everyone's been asking me about since I made the video. and. In here we have some dwarf panda guppies which are available down below. But we also have some of these Borneo suckers. So these are zebra Borneo suckers. And I bought 14 of them to try and breed them in this tank because I thought they would breed like hillstream loaches. And it turns out these guys are not easy to breed at all. Um, I haven't had any success breeding them and I don't think I'm gonna have any success. I think it's too hot in the fish room and I just don't think that they think it's the wild. And they're constantly just up here looking for more food because I had food and then they just swim down to it and go and get it. So. That's been a little bit annoying, but these panda guppies have been breeding great and really like this aquarium because the rocks make the water quite hard. And then down here, we have my colony of trilineatus quarries, which are just constantly breeding. I pulled out eggs yesterday and it looks like they're breeding right now. So I've got six or seven of them, I think. And uh, they breed really well in this aquarium. You can see them all swimming around. They're a really cool quarry. Very, very common. They're nothing too special, but they breed all the time. And then next door, we have my panda quarries, which breed all the time as well. Now. In here we also have some pandacori eggs which I've been hatching out. They'll all be in amongst that, that moss there. So if I swish that around, we might get to see some movement. I'm not too sure. Yeah, you can see some of them swimming around down the bottom there. So those are just some more quarries that have been hatched and they'll need to go into a new tank. And then next door are the stirbar quarries which I just found out had some eggs this morning. So I'll need to go and collect those out. You can see some eggs up here and some more eggs over here, so I need to get these out pretty much now. But these are just my colony that you guys have seen quite a bit in previous videos, and I've been breeding a lot from these guys. And then apologies for the glare again. Just in these dark tanks, the glare gets really, really bad for some reason, so it's quite annoying. But in here, we've just got another colony of these peppermint bristlenose that haven't bred for me yet, but I just split the colonies a couple of days ago, so hopefully they start to breed soon. But they're just in here by themselves. There's like one or two guppies that have escaped a tank but hopefully they breed soon. I mean, I don't know whether they're gonna breed. I think they're very seasonal, these guys, so yeah. And then above them are my colony of these Bosmani rainbow fish that I've been breeding. Uh, they were very prolific at the start, but it seems that they have not been as viable since I moved them into this tank. So 
I'm gonna have to play around a little bit and see whether I can get them to breed a little bit better, but they're in here with eight L134 Plecos that have been growing out. I picked these guys up last year, so they should breed in maybe a year and a half. You can see there's another one right here. So these guys are getting quite big now and they're putting on a lot of size. So we might mix these guys in with our other ones once they are at breeding size and try and get some mixed bloodlines going on. But there's eight of them in here and they're all hiding behind that spawning mop, of course. So we're not gonna be able to see them too well. But the Bosmanis are doing very, very well, just not breeding as great as I want them to. And then next door is my colony of these L397 Plecos. I've got 10 of them in here. And I think they're at breeding size and I'm not too sure why they're not breeding. They probably just need a little bit more time. They've been really, really cool to keep. They eat a lot of veg matter. And some of these guys are definitely, I think, at breeding size. We'll just see over some time whether they start to breed a little bit better. When they're young, they look quite good, but as they get older, they lose a lot of that luster and they start to look a little bit more bland. But nonetheless, they're still very, very cool fish. And I really like to get some of these guys coming through very soon. I think they will start to breed very soon. And then down here, I just have a colony of these Blue Star Endlers. So there's some of these available on the website. There's a few in here that are definitely culls that need to come out. They just haven't formed properly. But these guys have been very, very good breeders and they breed very true. Um, I don't have to pick out culls very often. So lots of them available. And we've also got some of these Tiger Endlers available as well. Um, so if you're interested in getting some of them, they look very cool and they've been very solid as well. And they're in here with some cherry shrimp, so there might be some cherry shrimp down here. These are just red cherries, so you can see one there in the middle of the screen. And we've also got some of them as well. And then we have some of these longfin panda quarries. So I've been breeding a bunch of these. You guys saw some of the fry before. These guys, yeah, they've been breeding very often, um, but I'm not too sure whether I want to continue breeding them. Uh, they don't breed as much as the normal panda quarries do. And I don't think there's as much demand for these guys as I previously thought. So. I might just turn this into another tank, I'm not too sure what, but maybe I'll keep them, I'm not too sure. And then these guys are just going to scurry away when I put the camera in front of them, but these are some similar quarries, and I've only just figured out how to breed them. Um, they've all scurried away, so I'm going to be making videos in the future on how I breed these guys, but we've got eight in here, and these are a very hardy quarry, and I definitely recommend these to a lot of beginners, so yeah, I'm going to pretty much stop recording because there's nothing to record anymore, but those are my similar quarries. And then over here we just have some grow outs, we've just got some angelfish, like you can see here. And then we have some alien bedders, which I bred in a previous vlog, with some of these peppermint bristlenose as well. So there's a lot of peppermints growing out in here. And some alien bedders, these guys will be available in about two months time, I think. There's a lot of males you can see there, and they look very cool. I'm not too sure what type of alien bedder this is. I got these guys for free, so yeah, if you guys have any idea what they are, let me know down below. And then here we have a dirty tank with some yellow cherry shrimp in here. So these guys haven't been doing great. They were doing okay and they started to breed and the adults were dying. So I've added a bit of crushed coral. I think they weren't shedding their exoskeletons very well. So hopefully this crushed coral helps to get some calcium in the water and help that to happen. You can see there's a shell over there. So I think it is working and a lot of these fry have been growing up very well and this colony is starting to do a little bit better. But next door is a tank that I've been having a little bit of trouble with. And these guys are my crystals. I haven't been able to breed these very well. I've had one or two females that have been buried, but then when they drop, they just have been perishing and they haven't been doing great. So I think it's due to a water chemistry issue, which I'm trying to fix. So hopefully I can fix that and get these guys to breed, but I'm probably just gonna try and maybe turn away from doing a lot of these caradinas and more turn towards the neo caradinas because I've had a little bit more success with them. And I wanna spend the time on something else instead of trying to tweak their water quality all the time. And then up here are the other colony of these L134s, which actually have had the trapping, but that was unsuccessful. You can see there was some grazing on that fish there. So that was an unsuccessful trapping, but they're in here with some Bosmani grow outs. I'll probably be using these guys for brood stock, but there's quite a lot in here, so I'll probably have to sell a few of them. So these are just the L134s. But then next door is something that everyone's wanted to see, and for good reason, these are my favorite fish in the fish room. These are my L46 Zebra Plecos. I've got five in here. I picked these guys up last year. I feed these guys a ton of protein, but yesterday I gave them some zucchini to give them a little bit of veg matter just to help flush their guts out a little bit. But there's five in here, so there's one there. There's two or three under here, and there'll be one over here. So they're a beautiful fish. They've been growing out very well. Definitely my favorite fish by far. Like these guys are just such, such a cool fish. So these guys aren't my only L46. They're in here with these turquoise rainbows, which I should probably mention that I've been breeding. So 
you can see them there. Over here, I've got my other four that I've been growing out. These guys are a little bit younger, so there's one here, and then there's normally one hiding in here, so you can see there's one in there. And these guys are my other four, so I've been growing them out to breed in a couple of years' time, and we'll have nine zebra plecos in total, so hopefully we get some breeding going on. They're in here just with some more prey cocks, but such a cool fish. Like, I can't tell you guys how much I enjoy keeping these guys. They're so cool. And then in the final tank, we have lemon and clementine, which are my pair of flora discus, crossed with a snakeskin discus, and these guys have just not been doing great. They've been very healthy and they've been breeding and stuff like that, and this guy's just been sulking because they just lost their last batch of fry, because every time they have a batch of fry, they eat them. So hopefully they start to figure it out. I'm giving them maybe six more months to figure it out before I try and break them up and start again or something like that. But discus are not easy to breed at all by any stretch of the imagination. I think for some people they can be, but if you have an entire fish room just full of fish and your focus is not on the discus completely, they just definitely let you know that you just need to start focusing on them again. So that's pretty much gonna be it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys found this interesting, seeing all the fish in the fish room. And thank you so much for watching it. I'll see you guys in the next one.